Hi, Scott from the Centre of Excellence's Modelling Systems team here for another video. Uh, today I'm just wanting to talk a bit about my setup, um, so how I've configured my computer, um, as well as a bit about how I'm recording these videos, just because they seem like a pretty good way of reaching out and talking to people. Um, yeah, so my personal computer is running Ubuntu version 12. Um, you can see here I'm actually just recording one of the screens of my computer. I've got two screens on my computer. So basically what this means is on one screen I can be in the terminal working on stuff, while on the other, te on the other terminal I have stuff like my web browser if I'm looki looking up documentation. Um, or stuff like the chat room that all of the CMS team uses. Um, yeah, so a bit about my terminal. Um, obviously I've got a command line here. I'm using the solarized color scheme which I find quite nice with a dark background. Um, I find the dark background is a bit easier on the eyes. Your preference might be different. Um, but the solarized package works for light or dark backgrounds and it looks kind of pretty. Uh, one thing I've always got is the name of the computer I'm working on just because this tends to swap around a lot so say if I'm at Vayu it'll show Vayu and indeed the node I'm on so Vayu has a Vayu 1, 2 and 3 for load balancing and similarly Connecting to Axis Collab, you can see I'm SOAR5628 Axis Collab. Um, another thing I've got is these two numbers. These are only relevant really on VARU. So if we go back to VARU, what they are is a count of the number of jobs in the queue. Um, so if I just go NQ stat, you can see I've currently got a running job. So this is the number of running jobs, this is the number of jobs in the queue, um, as well as the current directory, and then just the dollar sign to indicate that the prompt is finished running. Um, so the way I set up computers that I work on is, I've got a directory called configs on each one, so if I go into that, so we can see I've got a bash settings, color settings, as well as settings for Vim. Um, Vim's my preferred editor. I have used Emacs before, though I can't really remember it much of it, because it was a few years back now. Um, I prefer Vim at the moment, just because it avoids me stretching to the control key. I did end up with a bung pinky finger um, pressing too many control keys, so that is something you should watch out for if you're using uh, Emacs. So these are my, um, back to this, these are my configuration files. If I just look at one of them, so the bash configuration file. So this is setting up things like terminal colors. Um, this is what sets up that prompt with the number of jobs. So you can see here it's running QSTAT to find the number of jobs for the current user, which would be me, as well as some general preferences. And similarly, if I go into Vim, VimRC, I've got a lot of different things in here. Um, different Vim configurations that I manage with Bundle, Fortran syntax highlighting, C syntax highlighting, various tab stuff, um, searching. This stuff is all pretty useful. It means I can, when I search, it does it case insensitive, so if slash is search in file, so if I want to find say this thing which is mixed case, instead of having to go type in mixed case, it also does that highlighting, um, I can just type buff new file in lower case and it will automatically go to it. Um, so that's ignore case, smart case, if you do start typing in capitals it will continue to search with capitals, um, incremental searches, it searches as soon as you start typing. 
and highlight search means it highlights all of the matches. So you can see those are all of the matches for uh, buff new file. Oops, actually I'll just go back to this. Um, all of this stuff is setting up a template. So if I say make up a new Fortran file, what it will do is pop, pop up the copy note copyright sorry copyright notice at the start of the file along with the author and my email address um, just so it so all of my files will have a copyright notice which is kind of handy to have especially if you're sharing things if you don't put a copyright notice generally that means people can't actually use it they have no right to use it so um, you'll, if you're trying to share things, you generally want to try and put as permissive uh, license as you can. Um, in the CMS team, we prefer to use the Apache license, which is pretty much anyone can do whatever they want with it, as long as they um, uh, give credit to the Center of Excellence and the Modeling Systems team. So let's get out of that. Um, so this is managed in git, so I can do git status and git remote show so it's on github there we go so it's at the github address scottwells.slash-configs so I just go over to my GitHub on my other screen. I'll be back there in a moment. Just have to find the right repository. Configs, configs, there we are. So if we go over to GitHub here, so this is basically the same as what I was showing you in that folder. So this has got my bash settings, as well as my vim settings, and that sort of deal. Uh, the good thing about this is, um, if I go on to value, it's using the same repository for all, the, all of the config files. So if I go cd configs, I can run git update, and that will automatically um, no, sorry, git pull, and that will automatically get any changes that I've made in another computer and make sure everything's synchronized. Um, so that's how I manage my configuration files. Um, another thing I just wanted to show you was how I was doing the videos. So if I go to slash projects video. Um, and list here. Um, so I've written a couple scripts to record the videos. So if I just go, these are on GitHub as well. So if I go git show origin, uh, git remote show origin, that'll show the address that it came from. Or similarly, I can go over to GitHub. So this is at Scott Wales slash screencast. So there are three things here. There's a timer.py. So this is just a little timer that shows how long I've been jabbering on for. So that's just a little Python script that was fairly easy to write. As well as a recorder. So this is using a program called AVConvert or AVConv, which records the input from X11 as well as my microphone and saves it as a 1080p high resolution thing. So this is talking about where where on the screen I'm recording. And render this extracts the audio from that file just because I record the audio and video in the same pass just because that's easy and it does some filtering on it to make it a less, bit less sounding awful 
and recombines it and converts it to X264 for YouTube. Um, so that's fairly easy to use. All I do is dot slash video or dot slash record and then the name of the what I want to record. So record foo would record a pro we would record a video called foo. Um, anyway, as you see from my timer there, it's been about 10 minutes, so I think I'll leave you there. Thanks for watching, and depending on how things go, I might continue these video logs just to show off interesting things that I've run across, or programming techniques, or whatever. Okay, thanks for watching.